measure how well a society is functioning, economists consider consumer and producer surplus. Without government intervention in a market, total surplus is the sum of consumer and producer surplus. Consumer surplus is the difference between how much a consumer is willing to pay for something and the actual price of that item, while producer surplus is the difference between the minimum price that a producer will accept and the actual price of that item. The total net benefit to consumers and producers from trading in a market is known as the total surplus. Perfectly competitive markets exist in textbooks, but nowhere else. A perfectly competitive market would be one where prices are equal to the cost of producing the last item in the market. Realistically, there are some highly competitive markets, which is a market in which there are many buyers and sellers, in which neither individual firms nor consumers has much power in setting prices, and in which firms are selling a good or service that is largely standardized. The coffee shop market is a good example. There are a large number of consumers. Around 150 million people in America drink coffee on a daily basis. There are a large number of producers. Around 24,000 coffee shops operate in the United States. The coffee shops are selling a product that is largely standardized. As a result of all of the above, the market in which coffee shops operate in the United States is highly competitive. For this reason, individual consumers and producers in the market have little power in setting prices. Instead, they are reacting to changes in the market price for coffee. In economics, highly competitive markets are also thought to be highly efficient. With so many choices available to consumers and so many customers for producers to attract, the laws of supply and demand would work especially well. In highly competitive markets, quantity supplied will equal quantity demanded for a particular good as both consumers and producers react to price signals. There will be an equilibrium price that creates an equilibrium between the amount that producers supply and the amount that consumers demand. Consumer and producer surplus will be maximized as both parties get the most benefit they possibly can from trading in the market. This is another benefit of these competitive markets getting the price right. The United States coffee shop market can be represented on a graph. The different amounts of quantity supplied and quantity demanded at various prices are given. Quantity supplied is equal to quantity demanded at a price of $3 per cup, and the equilibrium quantity at that price is 400 million cups of coffee per day. At the equilibrium price, consumer and producer surplus are also maximized. The area of each surplus is as large as it can be given the market price. So total surplus, the total net gain to consumers and producers from trading in a market, is maximized at that price. When markets aren't operating efficiently, or when governments intervene in efficient markets, there may be some level of efficiency loss or deadweight loss. The more deadweight loss in a market, the more inefficient the market. Deadweight loss is loss to the economy from missed opportunities or resources being used inefficiently. Even in highly competitive markets, quantity supplied may not always equate to quantity demanded. There are a number of possible reasons for this. For example, both production and distribution take time, and a host of other things can disrupt the process before the final product gets to the consumer. Because the production and distribution processes take time, suppliers have to forecast what they think demand will be in order to get goods into stores so that they'll be available. Stores also forecast and place their orders ahead of time. Just like on the supply side, any number of possible things could affect consumer demand, and the quantity demanded can either be much greater or much less than suppliers anticipated. A graph displaying perfect equilibrium is useful in making production decisions because it shows what happens when a theoretical market gets both production and pricing right. What happens when suppliers get the quantity wrong, though? Producers have either oversupplied the market, quantity supplied is greater than quantity demanded, or undersupplied the market, quantity supplied is less than quantity demanded. Both are cases of deadweight loss. This is also called efficiency loss, or loss to producers and consumers due to oversupply or undersupply because the economy is not allocating resources efficiently and the market is not in equilibrium. Both also have an impact on consumer and producer surplus. Undersupply occurs when quantity supplied is less than quantity demanded at the equilibrium price in the market, resulting in both consumer and producer surplus being reduced. 
that is, both consumer and producer surplus are less than they would have been at equilibrium. This loss represents an efficiency loss to consumers, who cannot purchase as much as they want, as well as to producers, who are not selling as much as they could. There is unmet demand in the market. At the very least, this is annoying for consumers, but it means loss of potential profit for producers. Because both producers and consumers are part of the overall economy, this loss in total surplus is called a deadweight loss for the economy. There is less economic activity than there should be. There are also available resources that are not being utilized since they were not used in the production process, another source of inefficiency. On a graph showing price on the vertical axis versus quantity of coffee on the horizontal axis, a line plotting consumer demand will fall going to the right as prices fall and quantity produced increases. A line on the graph plotting producer supply will rise going to the right as prices climb and the quantity produced increases. The place where these two lines cross is the equilibrium point. Any total quantity that is less than the quantity produced at the equilibrium point will be a situation of undersupply. Oversupply occurs when quantity supplied is more than quantity demanded at the equilibrium price in the market, resulting in producer surplus being reduced. This only affects producers. For example, this time there are 500 million cups of coffee available, but at the market price, consumers only want to purchase 400 million. Consumers will not suffer a loss of surplus this time. They can still get all the coffee they want. However, it is costly for producers as they had production costs that they are not fully recovering through expected sales, as well as extra costs incurred now by having to store this unexpected inventory. It is also a deadweight loss to the economy because resources were used during the overproduction. Those resources were used unwisely and now are not available for any alternate uses where they could have been used efficiently. On a graph that shows price on the vertical axis and quantity of coffee on the horizontal axis, a line plotting consumer demand will fall going to the right. As prices fall, the quantity produced increases. A line on the same graph plotting producer supply will rise as prices climb and the quantity produced increases. The place where these two lines cross is the equilibrium point. Any total quantity produced that is greater than the quantity produced at the equilibrium point will be a situation of oversupply. Thank you.